Hey, this is Jake with the Rodeo Labs Pro Gravel Team. In a minute, I'm going to sit down with three of my four teammates that participated in our first event of the season, Old Man Winter. But first, I'd like to talk a little bit about the race format and how it went down. In past years, Old Man Winter has ran as a mass start event out of Boulder County, Colorado. However, this year, it was a self-timed Strava segment race with a three-week window for completion. You could ride the course as many times as you wanted. However, your best times over those two segments were combined for your overall race time. So we're sitting down with Jess, Nick, and John Kavner, all members of the Rodeo Lab Troll Gravel Team. We're going to talk a little bit about the Old Man Winter experience that just went down. When did it finish? A week ago? So last week? Yeah, I think so, right? So yeah, Old Man Winter, like we talked about, ran over a three-week span. So these guys could go out and ride the course as many times, and their best time over two segments counted for their race time. So what did you guys think of the format? Uh, it was time segments, not a mass start event, probably the first that you've ever done other than a time trial on the road. How'd it go? Whoever wants to start, Jess? Well, Ladies first. I thought it was a cool, cool idea for the race during COVID, um, but there are definitely a lot of factors that play into it. Yep. So, depending on what day you chose to ride it, um, the weather played a big role. Definitely advantages to picking the right day if you're able to, if you live close and you're mm -hmm. able to kind of pick and choose what day you ride it or if you ride it multiple times. Um, and then another factor that plays in is if um, if you have someone, I guess this is more for, well, it's for the, ma the males and the females, but if you're a female and you have someone to ride with the whole time, that makes a huge difference. Yeah, well, domestique um, and, and drafting definitely goes on. So that's yeah. definitely a different, that factor plays out differently in a virtual race like this than it would if you're all on the start line together. For sure. Right. But, How about you guys? Yeah. I know you guys wrote it together for the second we time. We did, yeah. yeah. So I wrote it to begin with uh, with another teammate. Um, and he had a gravel bike at the time, and I my gravel bike was at our sponsors. So it was being built up. Um, and, you know, I so I rode my road bike. Um, so yeah, so the first time you did it was with Brett, Brett. who actually took sixth overall. In, yep. in the end, yeah. Yeah, he took yeah. sixth overall, so, you know, not far off the top five Definitely. places by any means. Right. Um, but, yeah, it was the first time you rode with a road bike with him. Yeah. Kind of got a lay of the yeah. course, a field. So that was interesting. He he rode it with 26B wheels. Um, 650B. 650B, yep. sorry. Yeah, 650B wheels. And um, and so that was definitely slower. Um, okay. Even though they were slicks. Yeah. Um, uh, it was it was definitely a challenge to do it with the 650B wheels. Mm -hmm. um, and so I basically domestiqued for him. So I yep. rode my Madone, uh, which was really fast on all the, you know, uh, most of the gravel, yep. except for Rowena. Mm -hmm. so, um, so that, and we had a super windy day. It was... Same day that Jess did it. It was disgusting wind. It was so windy. <laughs> it was, was it 30? It was over 30 Wasn't miles an hour. Right? So that yeah. weather oh. really came into the play throughout the race, depending on the day. I mean, yeah. and then they extended it. It was supposed to only be two weeks, and they extended a week because right. it was below zero. I mean, that Arctic blast that came right. through really kind of put a hamper in a lot of people's exactly. ability to get a clean run. Yeah. So you guys had a... A pretty good day out there. You well, good weather conditions. Winds were pretty light. Yeah, yep. it was super yep. cold. So when Nick and I did it, it was midweek. It was Wednesday. Yeah, we had just picked up our gravel bikes from from Rodeo. Yep, just got built up. Yeah, the new color scheme. Pretty awesome. Yep, I love the matching wheels. I love the the topo design on the night. Yeah, um, just really really cool. And I think it'll it'll. It'll really pop with the kids. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah, we're looking forward to that. But we're literally like adjusting stem height yeah. and reach like at 3.30 p.m. On the start uh, line. On the start line. Yeah. And we had to restart because 
You, your bolt slipped. My bolt slipped. We got about five miles in. Exactly. And we were going pretty good. We definitely we were, were hammering. Yeah. And he's like, dude, my seat's slipping. And I was like, and then he was pulled over, and I was like, oh. I don't know, I'm pulled over. New bike woes, yeah, and, it slows uh, you down. Yeah, yeah. so, so we, we restart. decided to restart. So yeah. that's, that cost us, what, five miles? Or five miles, a miles? good effort, and, yeah. and daylight. Yeah, yeah daylight. Yeah, because yeah, we finished in the dark yeah. um, that day. So. Probably 20, 30 minutes in the dark. Yeah. Nice and cold. Yeah. yeah. 14 degrees. Fortunately, yeah. we had um, our director riding behind us, John. John Park. So, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. That, was, that was really good for motivation. It was actually a good warm-up. That five miles. Yeah, it kind of was. Like, like we were ready to go. Like yeah, yeah warm up the legs. Yeah. So I was going to ask, how did the fitness feel being the first event and probably first race situation or race effort of the season? Yeah, fitness felt good. Got your base in, your aerobic base. I would definitely sorted out my bike over the course of it because I went down a frame size. That's right. Yeah. So I felt it felt really small at first, and I was like, man, I need a longer stem, and I just feel crunched, and my my shoulders are kind of coming up to my ears and by the end i was like john this bike feels so awesome yeah, like, yeah. i love it it just yeah. kind of morphed into it jess you're you're riding the same bike it hasn't been rebuilt yet for this season so mm -hmm. you felt at home yeah 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 cool and so so for me like the the first time i rode the course i felt the best of course i was on my road bike which i had been riding um and but but then and i felt and I had peaked for that, you know, yep. and, and then I was doing the same effort a couple of days later and, um, you know, just being a new fit with new pedals and new, new cleat position, all that, like that was, it didn't feel quite right. So now it feels great. But, yeah. But, uh, but then, you know, it was, it was kind of took a while to ease into the effort yeah so you had some bike setup woes i mean yeah first ride on any yeah. new bike you're totally. having to make adjustments so that kind of sucked yeah you know, getting thrown into it but it yeah. worked out in the end you guys took yeah. third and fourth and just took fourth over all the women yeah. so it was a solid day out there i mean yeah you guys only lost a world tour rider so I mean, <laughs> yeah you're gonna go home to the wife and kid you're gonna travel <laughs> nothing like <laughs> Yeah, Alex no Howes and Lachlan Morton. Yeah. I mean, yeah. We had them on Strava Live. And, and cause so we were. That was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. We could see them where they were on the course when we were on the course. Yep, so you could time your your efforts to make right. sure that they were at least yep. matching them. Or We had them for like the first three or four miles. <laughs> I, heard, I heard that there were some segment ending issues that. Where the Strava segments ended weren't the same as the map my ride or the, the signs, ride of, GPS. signs of the course. Oh, the signs of the course. Okay, yeah. so you guys kind of and it was different than the Strava too. So there was a little problems there, but at the end of the day, I mean, it was a solid effort. They still had ten minutes on us. Yeah, I mean, how much time were you? Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. No, that's awesome. So, being that challenge is there a tire sponsor? What were you guys running for tires on that specific course? Yeah. And you had some snow icy sections right. too, right? It was a little icy. Okay. Yeah. So what Spicy. were you guys running for tires? So we were running these actually, the thirty six millimeter Astratas. Challenge Stratas. Yeah. yeah. And they were they were almost the absolute perfect thing we could ride. I think Stratas and the thirty twos would have been even better. Okay. Uh, we didn't have those available at the time. But uh, I mean essentially it was it was almost a road bike course with Rowena thrown in there. Right. And so Rowena is a single track type, single double track type trail, and it had it had some ice and snow on it. Um, it also had some pretty big rocks, and okay. you had to get over. Um, so all in all, you wanted something that was really fast on the road, uh, that was light for the climbs, and but it's something that would roll really fast. Yeah. And so, so yeah, this was a good option. I think, I think it was uh, Aaron Huck did it with a thirty-two millimeter. And a road bike, and I think that was probably. Yeah. Jess, what were you running? You were running some big rubber on there. <laughs> I was running the Challenge Gravel Grinder Forty Twos. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, you had some some weight and mass, and not those definitely chance. have their place. It yeah. was probably not on that course, but I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, it would have been awesome to see you get another run at it. You didn't, unfortunately, yeah. right? You had a one shot at it. Yes. Snowstorm. Yeah, yeah, then the snow blew in, yeah. and then... And then the second weekend, or the second, the third Saturday that they yeah. owned it up, 
it ended up being pretty cold. And there was still yeah, snow. Yeah, there was a lot of snow in the yeah. course. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the pictures snow. of those guys that rode that day. They yeah, they were, they were hiking, biking. Haggard. Yeah. 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 So. And every other time that I've done this race, and I've done it like three or four times or whatever, um, we've had to run slash ride rolling. Yeah. yeah. So that was a big difference. I mean, the mouse start, you have yeah. traffic backed up ahead of you, and you get in that conga line, right. and just yeah. whatever the guy ahead of you is doing, you have to do the same. So if there was something to change about this format, what would it be? What did you guys think that like could be improved upon this race? Because I'm... Mm-hmm foreseeing that we may have another event kind of like this right. what do you hope to see some uh maybe some formality with segments and proper markings so you know exactly where they begin where they end maybe one solid weekend where everything is ran over not a three-week stretch that really gives yeah. home field advantage to the guys that live in boulder totally, in that area. totally. yeah i'd say you know one or maybe two days a run at it yeah is, is a good good call like have everybody do it on on either one day or two days mm-hmm. uh, having it over two weeks I think is is or three weeks is uh, too much yeah. just because conditions vary when wind varies and if you have the ability if, like in this case where you had two segments right and you could have one day where you had wind advantage um, for that day and then one day you had when wind advantage for the second um, the second segment right so the first segment had a win advantage on the first day and the second time you did it you had a win advantage on the you know the second um, segment yeah then that's that's definitely a huge advantage yeah um, and if you're just if you live in boulder and you can just sit there and watch the weather and you're like oh looks, looks good down. right now I can yeah. go down but you know i had to, yeah. a lot of planning oh, yeah, to just making totally. one run at it totally yep yeah. um that's totally understandable so First events out of the way, kind of get those jitters, except you don't get those jitters out of the way. Usually, that ends when you line up and you're racing someone head to head. So what's the next event? What do you guys got going on? So we got True Garrett. True Garrett okay. stage race Utah. for me. Yeah. Yep. Utah. So you're doing St. George. both the mountain bike and gravel race. Actually, it's a three-day thing. Yeah. And then you're just doing the gravel race. Just right doing now. the gravel. Yeah. Cool. Jess, what's next? I think next? that'll be in April. April? I haven't really decided yet. Okay. One of the Kansas ones. Oh. One yep. of the Kansas, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. the one that we did. Open, open range. range, open range is twenty fourth. That's so nice. nice. Yeah, that's a, yeah, open that's range. Is a nice race. Yeah. Cool. Will well, be as hot as last year. Oh my gosh! Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not as windy either. I yeah. mean, that was uh, that was pretty yeah, brutal was day. Yeah. Pretty crazy. Well, cool. Uh, any closing remarks? Anything you guys like to talk about? I thought it was cool. You know, just the old man winner, like just. COVID. You got to ride the entire course this year compared to last year. Much better than last year. (laughs) And, you know, just as odd and funky as it was, it was cool in its own unique thing because it was different. Um, And I, I don't know, it was fun to just really geek out on the tactical aspects of it and the equipment. And it was just, it was just different and unique. So I like that part. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, a lot of factors at play, but it's still fun to be able to get out and give a hard effort. Definitely. Yeah, really, really happy. I know with in Boulder specifically, it's hard to put on a race during something like COVID. Mm-hmm. And really happy that the race director um, decided to have an event and, yeah. and pay prize money. Like that was a big motivating factor, too. I don't think I would have done it without the, re- the prize money on the line. Um, and then... And then I, um, but I will say going forward, I really like everybody starting together, you know, yeah. in a non COVID type thing. Uh, but I also prefer it just being one race with one start and one finish and not the segments. Yeah. yeah. Um, personal sense. preference, I know it's hard with Boulder permitting and all that, but I really like a, a start and a finish line. Whoever crosses the finish line first wins. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, we see more of those events. Yeah. So, Absolutely. closing this little interview out, we'll check in with everyone again after the next event. Radio Labs Program. We'll check it out.